Welcome back. Today we are talking about verbs and the first thing we need to know about verbs is that verbs are divided into conjugation in Latin. Uh, nouns are divided into declensions. In the last chapter we did first declension. Uh, this chapter we're going to do first conjugation and second conjugation. So first conjugation verbs are verbs that look like the verb amo. And we, in our vocabulary, we did principal parts for verbs. So the principal parts for amo would be amo, amare, amawi, amatum. And amo means to love. Okay, and all of the verbs in our chapter for first conjugation, amo, laboro, um, clamo, these are all uh, verbs that fit this pattern. Okay, we also have second conjugation verbs. Okay, and second conjugation verbs are verbs that fit the pattern like dokeo. So dokeo dokere, dokui, doctum, and dokeo means to teach. All right, and so right off the bat, just observing uh, first and second conjugation verbs, we can see that uh, verbs like amo, which are first conjugation, they end in o, and verbs like dokeo, which are second conjugation, and an eo. So just by looking at the first principal part of each verb, we can tell the difference between first and second conjugation. We can also tell the difference by looking at the second principal part. Okay, the are for first conjugation, and the ere for second conjugation. That's really important. So when we talk about principal parts, uh, the second principal part which is also called the infinitive, is really the most important principal part. Okay, so now we know that verbs are divided into conjugation, first conjugation, and second conjugation. We also need to know that verbs have person. And there are three persons. There's first person, second person, and third person. And so first person if we're talking about what first person is, first person essentially would be I. So I am the speaker, I am the one telling the story, I am the first person. Second person would be you. Okay, so you are the second person. And then third person could be he or she or it. Basically someone that's not I or you, someone else would be the third person. All right, and we also, verbs also have number, like nouns. And remember that from chapter one, number means grammatically that a word is singular or it's plural. So if we have persons over here, first, second, and third, we're gonna put number on the top, so singular, here and plural here, which means that all of these have a plural. So the plural of I is we. So if you and I do something together, we do it. The plural of you is also you, except we would say you all. In the South, we would say y'all. Um, some people in Western Pennsylvania say yins, uh, which we will not be saying uh, at all. Uh, but, you know, sorry people from Western Pennsylvania. Uh, so, but you don't have to have the all. You could just say you. And then finally, he, she, or it, the plural of that is they. So the plural of he is they, the plural of she is they, and the plural of it is also they. So these are the persons and the numbers. And so why do we have these? Well, each of these has a corresponding translation. In Latin. So I'm going to set this up again, first, second, and third for my persons, and singular and plural, except I'm going to abbreviate, 
we can abbreviate because we're cool kids. Cool kids abbreviate. And now I'm going to set this chart up again. So I for first singular, you, and then for second singular, he, she, and it for third singular, and then we for first plural, you all for second plural, even though the all is understood, and they for third plural. Okay. Now in Latin, there's a special ending for the verb that corresponds to each one of these pronouns in English. So I in Latin is an O, and then you in Latin is an S, and then he, she, or it is T, we is mus, you all is tis, T-I-S, and they is ent. So we have O, S, T, mus, tis, ent. And these in Latin are called the personal endings. Okay, so OST, MUS, TIS, ENT. We're going to be using these a lot. And we use these to conjugate verbs. Remember that Latin is an inflected language, and so just about every word in Latin, not every single word, but most of the words in Latin will have a special ending that we put on to it. Okay, so I'm going to set up one of these charts again. So we have first, second, and third, and singular, and plural, and now we are going to conjugate our first verb. And if you look in your books on page 15, you will also see this done for you. Okay, so in order to conjugate a verb, first thing we need to do is we need to list the principal parts of that verb. So I am going to conjugate the verb clamo. Okay, so the principal parts are clamo, clamare, clamawi, and finally clamatum. Okay, and clamo means to shout. Okay, so one nifty thing about conjugating is that the first principal part is actually the same form as the first person singular. So we're just going to drag that up there into our chart. And we have clamo. Okay, the next step is to find the stem of the verb. In order to find the stem of the verb, we have to go to the second principal part and we have to take away the RE. Just exit out. Now it's gone. Okay, and what we're left with is clama. Clama is called the stem. The stem of the verb. So I'm going to write the stem. The stem, the stem, stem. Here I am writing the stem. And so we're going to write the stem through the chart. Okay, and now that we have the stem, all we need to do is add the endings for the personal endings. So we already have our O, we have clamo, and then S, clamas, T, clamat, mus, clamamus, tis, oh, make on there, clamatis, and ent, clamat. And if you're wondering about the macra, where they go, uh, they go on the second person singular and plural, and also on the first person plural on the stem. There's macrons here over the A because that macron is a natural macron. Okay, and there are no macra over the stem vowel in the third person. Okay, so now we have conjugated clamo, we need to translate it. So remember, basically think of, uh, of translating the verbs as reading them backwards. So remember that O means I, and clamo means to shout. So we drop the two, and we say, I shout. Okay, clamas, S means you, so you shout. Okay, T means he, she, or it, so he, she, or it shouts. Okay, clamamos, we shout. Clamates, 
you all shout, the all is understood, and clamant, they shout. We have now conjugated and translated our first Latin verb. Okay, now we're going to do a second conjugation verb. So I'm going to set up my chart again. First and second and third and singular and plural. And this time I'm going to use the verb docale. So docale, docere, docui, and doctum. Docale means to teach. And again, my first principal part is also my first person singular, so I just bring that up to the chart here. So docale. I'm going to take away the RE to get my stem. So doke is my stem. So I'll write the stem throughout my chart. Oops. Stem, stem, stem. And then I'm going to add my endings. I already have my O. Then S, T, Mus, Tis, Ent. Okay, and even though this is a second conjugation verb, our pattern is the same. We use the first person singular for the fir or the first principal part for the first person singular, and then we take off the re from the infinitive, and we get our stem, and then we add our endings st most ascent. So it doesn't matter if the verb is first conjugation or second conjugation. And now I'm going to translate all of these verb forms. So dokeo is I teach. Dokes is you teach. Doket is he, she, or it teaches. Uh, dokemus is we teach. Dokatus is you all teach, all being understood and ent is they teach. And that is how we conjugate verbs in the present tense for first and second conjugation. And thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time.